ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كان الناس امه واحده فبعث الله النبيين مبشرين ومنذرين وانزل معهم الكتاب بالحق ليحكم بين الناس فيما اختلفوا فيه وما اختلف فيه الا الذين اوتوه من بعد ما جاءتهم البينات بغيا بينهم فهذا الله الذين امنوا لما اختلفوا فيه من الحق باذنه والله يهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم ام حسبتم ان تدخلوا الجنه ولما ياتكم مثل الذين خلوا من قبلكم مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ يَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا يُنْفِقُونَ قُلْ مَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِلْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ وَمَا تَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ صدق الله وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam as you know the month of Dhul Hijjah is the last month of Islamic Hijri calendar calendar and taqweem is as ancient and old as human history itself and how they were establishing their calendar so one thing is natural taqween and fitri and that is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that i have subjugated to you the sun and the moon لِتَعْلَمُوا عَدَدَ السِّنِينَ وَالْحِسَابَ so you may calculate based on solar system or lunar system that is number 1 and number 2 in human history the number of months in year maybe that is solar or that is lunar allah says in na'iddat ash-shuhur 'inda allah isna 'ashara shahran fi kitab allah in the creation of allah in taqweeni and natural system the months are 12 in number and allah says alaka din al qayyim that's an established calendar nobody of the whole world or all of the human being unanimously they cannot change it because nature is not in our control my dear respected brothers and sisters in islam then in human history as i mentioned some people they used to calculate based upon lunar system and some of them on solar system islamic sharia it has based its rules 
based on lunar calendar. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, now how they were starting the year calculation. So, before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Arab, they used to start from Waqiatul Fi, or the event of the elephants, when Abraha al Ashram, he attacked the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah destroyed his whole army, along with the dust and the group of elephants. And these elephants were used like a shovel and crane to demolish a building. Allah has mentioned there, لِإِلَافِ أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ فَعَلَ رَبُّكَ بِأَصْحَابِ الْفِيلِ أَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ كَيْدَمْ فِي تَظْلِيلِ And that event happened before the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the same year when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born which was 570 after Jesus or Isa alayhi salatu wa salam Why it happened? One answer is very much obvious because Allah has to protect his house and he protected the same. And that's why when Abraha al-Ashram, he was taking and grabbing the cattle of the people of Arabia close to Arafat and Muzdalafa. So he caught almost 100 camels of Abdul Muttalib, the chief of Mecca. When Abdul Muttalib heard about that, so he went to Abraha al-Ashram. Abraha was sitting in his tent. The moment Abdul Muttalib entered to the tent unintentionally, suddenly Abraha al-Ashram, he gave him a protocol and respect and he stood up in front of him. Later on, his ministers asked him that, Sir, how you gave him that protocol? He said, some invisible force, it pushed me to stand up in front of their guy. So respected brothers and sisters in Islam, then when he told him that I am the chief of Mecca, so Abraha said, maybe you are here to protect Kaaba. He said, no. Lahu Rabbun Yahmihi. Kaaba has its own owner, its own master. He will protect it. I am here for my camels. So he said, okay, give him his camels. When Abdul Muttalib, he saw the arrangements of that enemy. So he came and he announced to the people of Mecca that leave the city as soon as possible. Go to the hilltops and let them come inside and see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do to them. So it means when the protectors are the defenders of them, they raise their hand that we cannot do. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he takes it metaphysically. So Abdul Muttalib and his people, they were the defender, but they raised their hands that we cannot. They went to the hilltops. Now when Abraha, he approached the house of Allah along with his army, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent the group of birds, yes, and having guided missiles in their paws and in their beaks, and hitting them, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it. So that is the obvious answer. But the philosophy therein, that look, a messenger is coming soon, and he is the messenger of the Lord of this bed, or this Kaaba. So you people have to believe in him and his mercy. That's why after Surah Al-Fil, there is فَلْيَعْبُدُ رَبَّهَا ذَلْبَيْد when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored the people of Arabia to that extent, so they should have accepted the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why they did not accept his message? So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, that was a very major event. So that's why the people of Arabia, they started their new calendar with their. But some people, they were not writing the year number in their documents. In the time of Sayyidina Umar, Razi Allah ta'ala an, a case came to Sayyidina Umar, Razi Allah ta'ala an. So when Sayyidina Umar looked into the document, it was written there, 13 Shaban al-Mu'azzam. So now Umar, he was thinking 13 Shaban al-Mu'azzam, 
Shaban is the month before Ramazan, 13 of that month, but which year? This year, the past one, 10 years before, 100 years before, million years before, what it means? So then he summoned the Majlis Shura or the Consultative Council and he asked them that we have to start a calendar but based on what? So some of them, they gave their point of view from the birth of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is a major event. So he said yes, that is a blessing of Allah but still when he was born, he was not known to people that he is the messenger of Allah. He was known as Muhammad son of Abdullah and son of Abdul Muttali. That is number one. Another person, he said we should start it from Nubuwa when he received the message and got the prophethood. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, he told the Majlis Shura actually at that time how much he was suffered and his people and followers. So when we will mention in our documents, Sanai Nabawi, so it will remind us all those difficulties which Bilal was facing, Ammar was facing, it will make us upset. So they said, okay. So then some of them, they said that we should start it from the death of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, such a fajah, such a tragic accident that I was not in my sense. Osman was not in his sense. Sahaba, they were not in their, in their sense. When we will mention it, it will remind of their grief as well. So then, the Sahaba and Tabi'een of Majlis Ashura, they were sitting there and they said, Amirul Mumini, now that's up to you. So he said, if you will allow me, I have to start it from Hijra, migration from Mecca to Medina, which was a release of Muslims and relaxation for them and that was a relief for them and not only that this migration or establishment of the Islamic State that is the base of deen which is spreading now every day to other manatir and other zones as well so it will remind us that this is the da'wah they said that is good so he a calendar then he asked them what month should we start with Ramazan Shaban, Rajab, or what? They said, Amir al you should decide. So then he said, we should start it from Muharram. Regarding Muharram, we are of the view that Muharram is great because of the sacrifice of Hussein. Radiallahu ta'ala an. Yes, his sacrifice, that is historical. His sacrifice, that is an example. His sacrifice, that's a devotion. His sacrifice, it's a loyalty, must be appreciated. But Muharram is not respected because of Imam Hussein. And that is not respected because of the martyrdom and shahada of Sayyidina Umar as well. He got martyred on the very first day of the month of Muharram in Masjid Nabawi. But Muharram was a sacred month since the days of Adam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He accepted the tawbah and repentance of Adam in the month of Muharram. Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam along with his follower he got rescued from the flood in the month of Muharram. Sayyidina Musa along with Bani Israel he crossed over Mediterranean in the month of Muharram. And on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi sallam he saw the Jew people there in Medina that they are fasting the tenth of Muharram. He asked them about the history of that day. So they said, Yawn, qad manna allahu ala bani Israel wa anjahum min fir'aun. That that is the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed Pharaoh and his people in Mediterranean and he caused Musa and his followers to cross over Mediterranean. So Musa alayhi salatu wa salam used to do this fast as a thank to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we do that. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam said, فَأَنَ أَحَقُّ بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ I am much more closer to Musa than you people. So then he said to Sahaba, رضوان الله عليه مجمعين, from next year, we have to fast this tenth of Muharram, but to have a distinction from Jew, we have to add either the ninth with or the eleventh with, because distinction is must. 
if you will not establish or keep with your distinction, so you will lose your identity. Yes, and that's why we the Muslims, we must try to teach our children that look, this is our identity, this is our distinction. Yes, for example, now I think next Friday is 31st of October. Yes, the witches will come down. Not to our houses, their houses. Yes, because to our houses, the witches cannot come. The jinn and demons, they cannot come. Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum la ta huzu sinatun wa la naum lahu ma fis samawati ma fil arz and demons are jinn. They are everywhere. Not only in October, in September they were there. <laughs> and in November they will be. Yes, so anyhow, how we we'll protect ourselves from jinn and demons? Ayatul Kursi. Imam Bukhari narrated a hadith. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an he was giving duty of God there on the grain of Betul Mal. Yes, a big bunch of grain was there. Abu Huraira used to stay at night there. Yesterday I was writing there. Yes, one, I, I, I do not mention the name. I asked one of my friends that uh, you are duty. Yes, and you have to sleep at that time. So he said that at night time where I am guarding and sleeping the whole night. Because that's a construction point. There is no any duty. But I have to be, I said that's good. Yes, so yesterday I was writing in my fiqh book there, what is sarata or what is stealing or what is theft? So Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi, he defined theft, ahzumadin, muhtaramin, muhrazin, fi khufiyatin. Ahzumadin, mamlukin, muhtaramin, muhtarazin, or muhrazin, fi khufiyatin. To take away the property, which belongs to someone. Yes, if that is not belong to someone, for example, fish, that's a property. If somebody will own it, but is not his, that's valuable thing. That's why it is sold per kilogram, how much? Yes, got it? That this type of fish and this type of fish and this. But is not his, that is not owned by somebody and you got it from the water, so we will not take you to a court of law that you committed theft. Because that is not an own property. That's number one. So Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi, he defined akhzu malin, mamlukin, muhtaramin, muhrazin, fi khufiyatin. Ya subhanallah, what a beautiful, defi defi beautiful definition is given by Imam rahmatullahi alayhi to take the owned property of someone, but such a property which has a respect and value. Because if you will take away this tasbih of mine, even though it pri in price a little bit, yes, I use this tasbih and uh, sometimes I get it uh, for one real. So I mean uh, three for one dollar or more than three. Anyhow, uh, sometimes some brothers when they are coming from Hajj, so they are bringing me some very precious and valuable tasbih. So I gift it to some ulama or something like that. You know what I am saying? That it could be a prestige but that's not a tasbih. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, and I tell them that I use, use mostly this 75 cent to speak. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, if somebody will steal this property of mine, so in Islam, I cannot take him to a court of law, and the court cannot cut his hand because he committed theft. Because of Hanifa, he put a condition, muhtaramin, which should have a value and a price islamically, which is 10 dirham at least. Because Ibn Masood says, لَا تُقْتَعُ الْيَدُ فِي أَقَلَّ مِنْ دِينَارٍ أَوْ عَشْرَةِ دَرَاهِمَا Ibn Masood narrates that the hand may not be cut it in less than 10 dirham and less than one dinar theft. So, أَخْزُمَالٍ مَمْلُوكٍ مُحْتَرَمٍ مُحْرَزٍ That their property is guarded by someone. And guarded that is of two types. If you have your house, yes, so as you know, that you cannot enter to the house or to the uh, uh, main shop of someone, for example, if that is closed without his permission. Can you say? No. no, you cannot. If you will, you are subject to law. So even though nobody is there, but if somebody, he broke the lock, or he opened the door, and he entered the house, and he stole something there, so now the definition of saraka and stealing is applied to that guy because that is his, that is guarding. 
and sometimes I was referring to, uh, uh, to that brother that you are sleeping even. So Abu Hanifa mentioned specifically, if in the property someone is sleeping, yes, so practically he is not guarding, but he is sleeping there, but still his presence there, that is a type of God. So if somebody will take away something therefrom, that is a theft and he would be taken to a court of law. Yes, you should remember it. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Akhzumalim, Mamlukin, Muhtaramin, Muhrazin, Fi Khufiyatin. Yes, secretly, in a hidden way, so you may not be seen. So it means, if you got someone there, and you slapped him like that, and you took away his wallet, that is not a saraka, that is called ghasab. It's called ghasab. Ghasab is another type of crime in Islamic law. Yes, ghasab is another, or looting, or dekaiti. It's another type, but that's not called the saraka. So now the definition of saraka is not applied. But anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, he started this uh, Islamic year from Hijra because Hijra is the base of power for Islam. When Islam got spread it, because when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was in Mecca for 13 years along with his fellows, he was in difficult situation. And that's why some of them, they used to become emotional. وَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا لِمَكَّةَ تَبْتَعَ عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابِ Oh Allah, why you are not giving us permission to fight and to retaliate? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, hold on your horses. Time is coming when you will have base. Yes, when you have political institution, when you will have political leadership. Yes, now this leadership is not political, that's religious only. So when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he established that state, and that was on 276 square miles. The first ever Islamic state of Medina, how much it was? 276 square miles, very little bit. The whole Medina city, that was the whole Masjid Nabawi of nowadays. Yes, you have seen Masjid Nabawi along with the yard. This was the whole city. Yes, so now Medina is one of the biggest cities. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, but in 10 years, the state which was consisted of 276 square mile, it was spread it to 1 million square mile. How much? 1 million. One million. And when Omar was there, so it was spread it and expanded to 2.2 million square miles. And when Osman and Ali and Muawiyah, because in the time of Ali, no any conquest took place because of the trouble. He was, yes, inside, he was facing the troubles. Yes, and the, the, the uprisings. So that's why he couldn't grab any property or any area, he couldn't conquest. But later on, when Muawiyah became Khalifa, once again he started proceeding further. So in the time of Muawiyah, this state was spread to three continents, Asia, Africa, and a big part of Europe. And that was 6.4 million square miles. Got it? 6.4 million square miles. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, this was regarding that Muharram is starting. And as, you, uh, as I mentioned, they say now Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, he got martyred in the month of Muharram when he was fixing the income tax on people who are earning. Income tax, it was fixed by whom? By Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, because for state you need money, where from the money is coming? From people. Yes, as we say, taxpayer money. Got it? So when he was fixing the tax on income or on earning hands, so there was one guy, he was basically from Iran, he was a Zoroastrian, his name is Abu Lulu al Firoz. He was the liberated slave of Mughira bin Shoba, radiyallahu ta'ala an. He was making at that time the hand grinding machine. And these grinding machine of Abu Lulu, these were very famous in Iran and also in Arabia. People were waiting for that. They were giving him orders to his fabrika or to his factory. And then he was making it with his uh, workers. So Sayyidina Umar, radiyallahu ta'ala an, he fixed an income tax on his profession. Four dirham per year. How many? Four dirham per year. 
So Mughi at the Shoba, he came and he said, Abir al this is way too much. I am not making that much money. So Sayyidina Umar told him, based on my inquiry and the inquiry of my department, you are making a good money. Yes, because your grinding machine are very famous all over the world. You are selling a lot. He said, sir, maybe they have told you wrong. My grinding machine are not that good. Yes. So Sayyidina Umar said, okay, so just make me one. I will test it. So when he turned around, he said in himself that I will make you such a grinding machine which will be spinning around until the day of judgment. Yes. When Sayyidina Umar, he heard it. The guy left. So he said to Sahaba sitting with him, that this guy will kill, will kill me. They said, how you can say it? He said, that he give me a threat. He said, what threat? He said, that I will make you such a grinding machine which will be spinning day and night 24-7 and that is spinning all over the world. Yes or not? Say. Yes. yes. So anyhow, he said that this guy, he will kill me. So they said, should we grab him? Yes. And he said, why you are grabbing him? And why you will beat him? He said a word. For his word, he is not punishable. That's not allowed in Islam. They said, sir, he gave you a threat. Should we put him in custody? He said, look, personal freedom of someone could not be yes, snatched for no reason. Yes, he's a free man. Let him. When he will kill me, then you should do what you want to do. Anyhow, the next day, that guy, he came to the Mehrab of Masjid in Abawi. He was hiding there when Sayyidina Umar came. And he started the prayer, Allahu Akbar. So that guy, his spear, yes, he stabbed Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala an in his hunch. Hunch is this part. Yes. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, he started bleeding. When he started bleeding, and he thought that I am unable to complete the prayer. So behind him, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiallahu ta'ala an, he was standing. He got hold of him and brought him forth to the musalla to complete the prayer. This is allowed only according to Abu Hanifa. Other Imam says that the prayer should be repeated. Abu Hanifa says istikhlaf is allowed if people are familiar with. But now people are not familiar with. If something happened to me, may Allah forgive and forbid. And I will hold the hand of someone standing behind me. He said, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. There will be a fight instead of istikhlaf. Yeah. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, so he made Sayyidina Abdul Rahman ibn Awf as his Khalifa to complete the prayer. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, he completed the prayer. Umar radiallahu ta'ala, when we are there in Hajj and some brothers are with me, so I show them the place when Umar radiallahu ta'ala was laying down on the ground. Yeah. When he got wounded, I tell them that this is the place where Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala, he was on the ground. So he was holding, yes, number, uh, his uh, wound not to bleed too much. And Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, when he completed the prayer, and not only they, look at that time when you will go, yes, notice it, that the Turkish structure, you know that or not? Those who have gone to Medina, Hisham you have gone? Yes, so you have seen the Turkish structure. Yes, the first part of, uh, I mean, of Masjid Nabawi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the structure is looking different. Yes, the old type of structure. So, there are the pillars. Yes, the structure, Turkish structure, Ottoman structure, it goes up to that and then the Saudi structure starts, the highest one. Yes, so in fact, that is up to that much. But in length, they added, I mean, in length, they added to the Masjid of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So where the pillars are up to what area was the Masjid of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are the pillars at that time, they have written Masjid al-Nabi alayhi salam. You will see there, Masjid al-Nabi alayhi salam. So I tell the brother that width is the same one, but this length is extension. Yes, and this area up to here, this was the Masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when you will keep in mind the Masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Mehrab of Rasulullah where he was standing that right in the middle. But now, that is not in the middle. On one side, there will be one-fourth of the area, but on the other side, there is a three-fourth of the area, three quarters. So anyhow, because that is extension, respected brothers and sisters in Islam, 
13 sufuf and 13 rows were standing behind Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. Number one, the commitment of Sahaba to prayer, especially for Fajr prayer. And then, especially in the days of Umar, if somebody is not there, why he is not there? Yes, he was Umar. Right after prayer, he used to go to his house. Yes, what happened to him? Why did he not attend the prayer? Yes, even though most of them, 99.9 percent, they were attending for Allah, but this 0.001 percent, he was attending the Umar will approach. Yes, and he will come, even though if I operated house, still he will give me a good beat.